let's talk about working in your new country that where you want to move abroad. Hey girl, hey, hey sis, are you a black woman solo traveler? Are you a black woman who wants to move abroad? This is a community for you. If you are new here, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button. Um, that way you'll get all of the content that we do here. And also make sure you share, hit the thumbs up button and also like, um, this video. So let's talk about it. A member of the community asked recently about income and making income in your new country and the income differential and whether they should just, they want to move abroad and if they should just get a new job in that particular country. Unfortunately, I've got some bad news. Unfortunately, in most countries, listen, the U.S. ranks top in terms of income. And I will tell anybody this, the US is where you go to make money. Now, listen, you you go spend it. Now, you definitely go spend it. But from an income perspective, um it is oftentimes really difficult and it's going to be a price shock because the salary you make in the US is not going to be the salary that you're going to make abroad. Let's take France for example. My salary, I am in tech and my salary would be be cut at least 50 to 70 percent um here in france so the pay this and the math is not mathing for the most part now you have the advantage there are some pluses and minuses in most countries you're not going to get paid the same as you would in the u.s we can even look at like portugal um portugal is quote unquote like a developing economy you're not going to get paid the same amount, not anywhere near. Um, London, uh, the UK, baby day salaries are in the basement. I don't know how folks are making it there because it, to me, I have a good, my good home girl is in London. So I'm there quite a bit. And yeah, I don't know how they making it because the salaries, the math ain't mathing. So um, you're not going to get paid comparatively in the UK. Let's talk about Spain. Definitely not. Um, Mexico, baby, let me tell you something. You can forget it, okay? So most countries, I think um, Australia may be a difference. I'm hearing that they do pay relatively well, but for the most part, most countries are not going to pay us what we make in the U.S. So even though our cost of living may be lower, um, that's one advantage of living here in France. For me, my cost of living is anywhere from 30 to 50% lower. Now I do take the hit in terms of um, converting USD, which is what I'm paid in, to Euro. There's usually a 10% or so hit on every transaction that I make, right? With my with my debit or usually with my credit card. Um, so I, you know, depending upon the exchange rate, we don't often factor that in, but that is a slight hit. But from an income perspective, this is why it's really important um, to develop online streams of income or, or streams of income that are not dependent on a specific location. So, um, you know, unless you want to make substantially less, now some people have no problem with that. For example, if you're in the hospitality industry and let's say you have your um, right to work, you have a visa, I only can go with France, which is what I know. But let's say you have your visa, which allows you to work for a remote, which allows you to work for an employer in France. For those of you who don't know, I my particular visa does not allow me to work in France. You will find that many of these countries do not want you as a U.S. immigrant to come in and take their jobs from their folks. They want you to come in and spend your money. They want you to come in and spend money on rent, food. They know that once you're here, you're going to contribute to their economy. You're probably going to have a higher cost of living, a higher disposable income. But what they don't want you to do is they don't want you to take jobs and social benefits from the people in that country. Listen, I, I get it. So um, unless you're like in the hospitality industry, for example, here in France, um, people who are waiters or waitresses or whatever, they're able to make a pretty good living and they're paid a livable wage. It is not like the U.S. where you're getting paid, what is it, $2 and some change per hour 
in your dependent upon tips. People who work in the service industry in terms of hospitality here are able to make a livable wage. They are, this is one reason why tipping here is so different because they're paid a wage every hour or whatever their salary is. Anything you give them is extra. They are not counting on your tips to feed themselves or feed their families. So that's an important distinction to add. Um, but it is one reason why if you are considering moving abroad, you have to consider the income piece. So unless you, I don't know, maybe y'all some trust one babies, maybe, maybe you guys get like a military pension or, um, disability income. And again, those are specific requirements. I know someone, um, a travel partner of mine, I think she gets some disability income and I believe she mentioned that she can't be gone longer than like 90 days or something like that. So you have to check on your specific scenario, but it's one of the reasons why I always say that in terms of moving abroad, it doesn't have to be like an all or nothing. Maybe it's you spend two months um, in Ghana, you spend two months in Ghana, for example, in the summer, maybe you spend, a, you know, if you've got the three months, if you spend a month in Portugal, a month in Spain, a month in France or whatever the case may be, it is about your particular situation. And so the advice may vary, but I will say if you are looking to move abroad, you have to answer that income piece because these countries are, you know, especially if you're on a visa. Now, if you are not on a visa, listen, they don't as much care because you're going to be there less than 90 days, 90 days or less. Okay. So they don't really care. But if you're going to be there long term, you have got to work out that income piece and you've got to have to be able to show that you have online income or, or income coming in consistently. They don't care where it's coming from as long as it's consistent. And most countries, especially for a visa, they're going to have income requirements. Here in France, that income requirement is they want you to make above the minimum um, salary of a, of a worker in France. And that's going to be about 17,000 euro or about right now about 18,000 and so and some change per year. So you do the math of how much you have to make per month. It's not a huge amount, but they do have, again, that minimum. I know that Portugal has the same amount. I'm not sure about Mexico, what their requirements are, but you have to be specific of the country that you want to move to and doing the research and figuring out what their income requirements are, also, how you're going to meet that? How are you going to be able to show? Um, one thing I, I love it when folks get creative, and I've had to get creative too because I I still I have an apartment in Atlanta. Um, my daughter in grad school still lives there. I have a two bedroom apartment, and I rent out one of the bedrooms, and so I'm able to get some income through that. It is not an all or nothing proposition. If you've got some property, if you've got a rental. You may be able to listen, you know, um, in terms of France, you know, basically the, the monthly amount that I have to prove is about, let's just say about $1,700 or so, $1,700, $1,800. I can rent um, that out. I can, if, I'm, if I've got a property, if I've got something to, to show that I am bringing in this minimum amount, then I won't have an issue with my visa. So it is all about how you do it and how you consider it. I don't want you to think like, oh, well, I don't have online income or I don't have a remote job or whatever. What do you have in your hand? Do you have a four bedroom home that you can rent out for those rooms to traveling nurses? Baby, you can get a lot of money that way. I, you know, do you have um, real estate in a an area where there are uh, univers universities and colleges and you're charging these students maybe, can you charge for a couple of rooms? Can you get about 2,000 or 3,000 a month? That is your income right there. That is enough for them to see that you are bringing in consistent income. So, you know, a lot of people, a lot of times people think, well, you know, I'm renting or, or especially if they own, if you're own, you're often in a really good position because again, you can rent those, those properties out. I am renting my property out, 
but um, you know, you can do a sublease, you can do whatever the case may be, you can figure it out. There are a number of sites. Um, what what is one of them? Furnishedfinder.com is one. I'm going to go back and put this resource, put that resource in the description box. But there are some sites that will rent to, you know, traveling nurses and medical professionals. They may be an option. I know I have used them in the past. Furnish Finder is one. Um, you know, you can do the whole Airbnb if you like or VRBO, whatever it is that's going to show that this income is hitting your account is what those folks are going to and in, in these other countries are going to be looking at. So I have a, a plan and a backup plan, right? So that I can show this minimum amount. But again, going back most of the time, you're going to have to, you're probably not going to be happy with the amount of money that folks make um, in your new country. Even though your expenses are lower, that amount of money, I know for me, it's a big mental thing. Like I just can't wrap my head around the fact that I'm making substantially less money. Now for me, again, if I had to, if I had to, there are some things that some people do. They will look at tutoring online. That is one. They'll look at teaching English. That is another particular avenue that people go, go to. Um, especially depends on what country you're in. I know years ago at one point, there were a lot of Chinese companies and schools that were bringing over um, English, native English speakers to teach their folks and teach their children and adults English. English, teaching English is a skill. I, I'm not the teaching type. Like I'm not, you know, you'd have to have your, is it TEFL? I think it's a certificate, a teaching certificate, but it really depends on what country you want to go to. There are some people who move to the Middle East. They're in um, Oman and they're in other countries. They're in the UAE and those places, countries like that will pay you a decent, they'll pay you a relatively so low salary, but the difference is that you don't have to typically pay rent. So you, your biggest expense, most of us, our biggest expense is going to be housing. So if that expense is provided for, then you've got to look at how much money do you really need for your other bills, especially if you are in a country with a lower cost of living. So it really just depends on how you plan to do it, how you plan to attack it. Do you have an online business? Do you have a, a remote job where you can work in that country, whatever country you want to move? Can you teach English? Is that something that you want to do? Are you a teacher? Can you transition your skills? Um, begin working with perhaps at private schools or, or places in different countries where learning the English language is a priority and they prioritize English, uh, native English speakers, which, you know, if you're from the U.S., you would quote unquote automatically qualify for that. So it's really think be, being really creative. Again, do you have a, a a property that you can rent out? Do you have a property that you own or do you have a rental property? What can you do to make money consistently? What can you show? What can you sell? What services can you offer? What consulting services? What can you do to show that you make the minimum income requirement in that new country. So let me know in the comments below um, where you are in your process. What are you What are you thinking? Are you thinking this is something that you'd like to do? Let me know. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and have a really good day. And I will talk to you on the next video.